Today I wanted to do a artist versus supply video, so I went down to my local Dollar Tree to see if I could find anything to use. I was really hoping to find was a coloring book. I've seen a few videos here on YouTube where an artist, like myself, <laughs> have taken a basic children's coloring book page and turned it into a masterful piece of art. The first Dollar Tree I went to was trashed out and unfortunately they didn't have any coloring books. So it was off to a second location. This Dollar Tree was in much better shape. And there were three books that caught my eye. This Charlie Brown Peanuts book, that's just for nostalgia's sake. This Justice League coloring book, and also this Toy Story Buzz Lightyear coloring book. I figured I would use one of these three to give this challenge a shot. And since it was after Christmas, these books were on sale for only 39 cents. So uh, yeah, we're gonna start with these. <laughs> Right, guys it is hours later but i made it back home and i'm in the art room now and i'm gonna see if we can take these coloring books and turn them into some real art you know i shouldn't say turn them into some real art because that's a disrespect for the people who actually drew this I and mean, this is art that's comic book art it's really good art but i just want to enhance it a little bit more with my own art style also picked up this really cool chalkboard while i was there i wanted something new to have on the table while i'm painting because i have this and you can see that's been through a lot oh yeah that's a lot better nice and new Let's see how long that lasts. <laughs> I think it would be a cop out to do the DC heroes in this one because I'm so used to drawing comic books as it is. I want to challenge myself, so I think I'm going to do the Toy Story one. I mean, Buzz Lightyear is kind of a superhero. I mean, he's not like Marvel or DC, but you guys get what I'm saying. And I think I'm going to use paints for this one. And I know it's not recommended to use paints on the coloring pages. I mean, this is like newsprint. This is very thin paper, not ideal for painting on at all. But I'm gonna be using acrylics, which, which normally doesn't require a lot of water. So maybe that'll help me out here. It's all one hack where you can take some Mod Podge to prime your pages. So the paints or the markers won't bleed too to the other side. I'm not gonna do that in this video. That seems like a lot of work right now to just test out this little uh, project. Maybe when we get to the big boys, we'll try that. But right now I'm gonna find out which page I wanna paint and then we'll get started. One thing I'm gonna settle on is this one. I like how it has like the little space theme, something I can definitely manipulate in my own style. We don't need all these rockets, but I like the pose on this one, very heroic. I think this is the one we're gonna go with. So to protect the back of this, I'm gonna use some cardstock. And if you don't know what cardstock is, it's just a heavier sheet of paper. It almost feels like a lightweight piece of cardboard. And we're just gonna use that so it doesn't bleed through to the other pages. So the first thing I'm doing here is blacking out the background because I want him completely engulfed in space. And I'm using this acrylic paint right out of the tube, which is great because doing it this way does not cause the paint to bleed through to the other side. But eventually I did have to use some water just to even out this paint. So the background's all filled in. Oddly enough, it's very shiny. And we are putting this paper to the test. <laughs> Maybe I should have put down the Mod Podge, but it's too late for that now. Honestly, I think it's gonna be fine. Once it's all said and done, I'll just put a coat over it and maybe that'll help. Cause this paper is struggling. Now, part of me wants to say that I saw Toy Story, at least the first one. It's been like eight of them out already, right? And that new one that um, Chris Evans was in that I don't think anybody saw. I tried to watch it, honestly, I tried to watch it and I ended up falling asleep. I don't think it's because it was boring. I think it's just cause it was just late, late at night. And I was trying to, you know, make my night stretch and I just crashed out. Never turned it back on again though. So maybe that's saying something, sorry, Chris. I know over the years they've added a ton of new characters. I mean, clearly Buzz Lightyear is the most popular one and he got his own movie, even though it didn't do that well, but we're gonna move on from that. I've had many coloring books over my life cycles here on this planet, but I don't think I've ever used paints on any of the pages. And to be honest, I wasn't sure how acrylic paint was gonna take to the page, but I have to say it laid down much better than I thought it would. My goal at the beginning of every painting just to lay down all the base colors just so I know where everything goes. Just so I can get a feel of the character before I go in with the shadows and highlights. But I noticed I messed up on the inside of his suit. Quick little break here. It's looking pretty good so far. There are some areas that I think I really jacked up. I'm gonna have to go back and fix like the inside of his collar. I don't think that's supposed to be that much purple. I actually think that's supposed to be white or gray, but we'll figure it out. Looking at some of his pictures online and it's really hard to tell. Some areas have it gray, some have it completely green. I don't know. I'll fix it up and we'll make it look good. <laughs> so you guys may not notice, but I found this out on TikTok, everything's on TikTok. Woody from Toy Story was actually gonna be the villain in this movie, yeah. Remember that scene where Buzz Lightyear get hit by the lamp and accidentally thrown out the window? Well, the original draft was to have Woody grab him by the hand and fling him out the window, at first outside the window. Imagine how different Toy Story would have been if they went with those original storyboards.
Apparently Woody was supposed to be some evil ventriloquist doll. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm kind of happy they stuck to what we got because I feel like that'll change the whole mood of how we perceive this movie. So I just laid down all the base colors and it's looking a lot better now. I'm gonna go in with my Copic white marker to correct the inside of his collar. And then I can get to my favorite part, which is putting in the highlights and the shadows and all of the details. Now Buzz was looking pretty cool at this point with just the base colors laid down, but he was lacking a lot of dimension. I still wanted to keep him looking like an action figure and not so realistic as I did in the new movie. So when I added all the details with the highlights and the shadows, I still kept the colors pretty bright and vibrant. I did want to dirty up his suit just a little bit by doing some dry brushing with the shadows. And I don't know why, but I'm a sucker for adding these strong solid white highlights to every one of my paintings. I just love the look of it. And to me, it really helps those areas stand out. Now, originally for the background, I wanted to do a spray paint or an airbrush galaxy, but I didn't know how well this paper was gonna hold up to that. So I just decided to throw some paint down on the page and come up with this abstract starry night look. A bit lazy, I know, but next time I think if I would have prepped the page with the Mod Podge, I definitely could have did that spray paint effect. Now, I'm not a graffiti artist at all, but but I do love when they use those annotation marks to outline or highlight their paintings. It's something that I'm definitely gonna start playing around with a little bit more of my own paintings. And I think it works pretty well here. It gives the character a little bit more action. So it doesn't like he's just stuck there on the page. All in all, for my first color and book painting test run, I don't think it turned out too bad. I'm surprised that the paper actually held up with all of the colors that I've layered on top of this. But then again, I didn't use a lot of water and most of the paints I used them right out of the bottle. If you have not tried to paint a coloring book page, I highly recommend it. Not only was it fun, very satisfying. If you love texture, which I know is weird because after every painting I do, I actually like to rub it <laughs> and feel like all the paint on top of it. You will definitely love the way this feels after you finish painting one of these pages. I definitely say my art style is a mixture of graffiti and comic art. And the one thing I love about both of those art styles is that they have a lot of motion. I guess you could say there's a mixture, a little abstract in there. Either way, guys, that is what I have for you today. Let me know what you thought about this coloring page painting. Who knows? I might just make a series and just paint this entire book. Speaking of paint, if you want to see more videos like this, I recommend watching this one next. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe before you go. I'll see you next week. To infinity and beyond! <laughs>